So here we are on edge one, and I will bring this uh, drop down bar down. This is part of my VMware workstation software, and you'll see I'm on the virtual guest edge one. So the first thing that I want to do in this case is go to uh, manage, and then I will select add roles and features. Uh, the first thing that's going to happen is going to come up and it's going to ask you to begin the process of installing roles and features and um, you can go ahead and skip this there's not really a lot of detailed information here that we need in fact you can actually select skip this page by default so we'll do that so we don't need to come through that again so we'll choose next so in this case we want to select the role based or feature based installation because intuitively we are installing the role we're installing the remote access role we are not performing a remote desktop services installation so in this case we do want to select role based or feature based installation so choose next here we want to select the server that we want to install the role since this is we're running the management console on the individual server itself we can just choose next if we were doing this remotely though we could select another server from the server pool if we selected one or even a virtual hard disk windows server 2012 does allow you to install roles and features remotely to an offline vhd but in this case we're going to select our default server and choose next and here we're going to scroll down and we're going to select the remote access role and when we do that the add roles and features wizard comes up and it asks us do we want to add some additional features that are required for remote access so in order to support the remote access role we need to install these additional features and if you scroll down the list you'll see there's a number of different features that are required to support direct access also, you'll all notice that the include management tools, if applicable, is checked. We want to select that since we are on the, the console of the remote access server. So choose add features. From here, we'll go ahead and select next. And it's going to ask us, again, this is a bit redundant, but you'll see that it's going to ask us to install any features. Of course, the features that are required for this role were already installed. So you'll see that the group policy management's installed. You'll see that the RAS connection manager kits installed, the remote server administration's tools are installed for this particular role. Uh, so we don't have, there's, there's nothing else that we need to add here. This, the wizard has already prompted us to install all of the features that are required and necessary for the remote access role. So choose next. So the remote access role requires some additional role services and so we'll go ahead and select next to view those. In this case it's going to require the service, the direct access and VPN or RAS service. We do not need the routing service at this time so we don't need to add that. We can just select direct access VPN and RAS server so we'll choose next. Next it's going to ask us about configuring some of the IIS features. So IIS is actually required to provide some support for direct access, specifically the uh, network location server or NLS, which is a web server that the clients, remote clients are going to use to determine if they are on the corporate network or if they are on the public network. The IIS role is also required to support the IP HTTPS IPv6 transition protocol. In a later lesson, we're going to configure direct access using a dedicated IIS server that's external to the direct access server to serve as our uh, network location server. And if you're thinking you can eliminate the IIS role from the direct access server in order to perhaps reduce the attack service or ease the patch management burden, unfortunately, that's not the case as IIS is still required for IP HTTPS functionality. So we'll choose next. And again, our role services are here, and these are the role services that are specifically required to support IIS. The defaults here are fine. We don't need to make any changes to this. Everything that you see that's enabled by default is all that is required to support the IIS role in support of direct access. So choose next. And then uh, here's where we want to actually confirm the installation. And uh, we can actually go through and review all of the services all the roles and features that are, are going to be installed in support of this. We do want, since it does require a restart, where I'm going to go ahead and select the box that says restart the destination server if required, and then we'll confirm this. We'll choose yes. Um, just to bring a couple of other points here, the export configuration settings is what you can use to actually export these settings to a file that can be executed using PowerShell. So if you want to automate this process on additional 
direct access servers, you can certainly simplify that by exporting the configuration settings if you choose. So once we're done here, so we can go ahead and click install. And from here, we're going to uh, let the process run. And uh, it's going to install all of our roles, features, and then it will automatically restart the system. And um, we can come back in after that, complete the configuration of the direct access role. Now that Edge 1 is back online, we can go ahead and log back into the system and complete our configuration of direct access. When you log into the server, by default, the server manager is going to open automatically. Once the server manager has loaded and added all of the roles and features that are installed on this server, then we can move forward with our completing the configuration of direct access. And you'll notice that the add roles and featured wizard does launch automatically because it's still finishing the configuration of direct access or the installation of the role, the remote access role itself. And so at this point, the installation is complete, but it does require some additional steps. Uh, you'll see here that there is a link to open the getting started wizard. If we were to click on this, we could actually go through and deploy direct access using the getting started wizard. However, if you just, if you select close, you'll notice there's an exclamation point here. And if you click on this, you'll see that the post deployment configuration is required for the direct access and VPN role on Edge 1. So let's click the Open the Getting Started Wizard link, and this will take us to the Getting Started Wizard to deploy direct access in a simplified deployment model. The Configure Remote Access Getting Started Wizard will be displayed, and for our purposes, we only want to deploy direct access. We're not going to deploy any VPN services at this point, so we will select the option to deploy direct access only. And here we're going to choose our topology for the deployment of our direct access server. We have a couple of different choices. We can choose edge deployment, which means it's connected directly to the public internet, behind an edge device with two network adapters. So if I've deployed direct access server as a multi-home server, so with two network interfaces, one in my private network and one that is public facing, and it's going to be installed behind a border router or edge firewall that is performing network address translation or NAT, I would select the behind an edge device with two network adapters. As I'd mentioned in one of the earlier lessons, direct access does support being deployed in a single network adapter configuration. Anytime you deploy in a single network adapter, you can only deploy it behind an edge device, so you would select that option here. Vintage Surf has chosen to deploy their direct access server connected directly to the public internet. So they are using an edge deployment. So we'll select that option here. Next, we need to enter the public name or IPv4 address used by our clients to connect to the remote access server. Here we're going to use the fully qualified domain name of da.vintagesurf.com. And it's essential that this name, that this fully qualified domain name resolve to the IPv4 address assigned to the external network interface of the remote access server. So in this case, since we're connected directly to the edge, that IP address is assigned to the network interface, the external network interface on our direct access server. If you are deploying this behind an edge device, this name must resolve to the IP address of your edge device, and then you will have configured your uh, NAT rules and ACLs to allow that traffic to get to the ex external IP address of the direct access server. So here, da.vintagesurf.com does resolve to the IP address assigned to the network interface on our server. And we can actually demonstrate that here. I'll do that. So you can see that da.vintagesurf.com resolves to the IP address 98.189.216.151. And if we do an IP config, you'll see that that IP address is assigned to the external network interface in our direct access server. So we'll choose next. 
And at this point, we are finished with the one caveat that we do need to make a small change in order to support our demonstration lab environment. So I'm going to select click here to edit the wizard settings. And I want to make one small change here with regards to the remote clients. So I'm going to choose remote clients and click change here next to remote clients. And what you'll see is that by default, the direct access getting started wizard applies these settings to all of the domain computers in our specific domain. In addition, it also selects the option to enable direct access for mobile computers only. Now this poses a problem for us in our demonstration environment in that my Windows 8 direct access client is not a mobile computer it's actually just a virtual machine running in my environment and so it technically is not a mobile computer and would not qualify or would not apply in this particular scenario choosing the option to enable direct access for mobile computers enables a WMI filter in group policy and it's looking for a very specific model of computer and, and this to, that would identify it as a mobile computer and so if we use these settings it would actually not work in my lab environment so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove domain computers I'm going to select add and I'm going to add my direct access clients that we had configured in an earlier lesson. I'm also going to deselect the option for enabling direct access only for mobile computers because I need it to apply to my virtual machine. So that's the only, need, the only change I need to make there and it's only necessary in our lab environment. So choose next and the network connectivity assistant is going to automatically fill this information in here in for you you don't need to do this this is done transparently and behind the scenes using the the standard getting started wizard but we do need to make one change here so although we don't need to add a resource here and this is again used to determine if the connectivity over direct access so the clients use the network connectivity assistant to give a visual indication if they are actually connected to the corporate network via direct access. The only thing we need to change here is we actually need to put an email address here for our help desk. This can be uh, any email address used that you want your clients to be able to send direct access troubleshooting logs to the help desk administrators. So I'm just going to put admin at vintagesurf.com and uh, the workplace connection this is just what's going to show up on the client side and we'll actually look at this a little bit later we can just leave this name here that's fine if you want to rename that you most certainly can it's just visual the last option here that you'll see is it says allow direct access clients to use local name resolution now this is a bit ambiguous and, and very confusing for even veteran direct access administrators what this fundamentally means is I want if I select this it allows the client to be able to disable direct access and what that means is that it will use its local name resolution for all name resolution requests so in this case I don't want that option I want direct access to always be enabled and I don't want the clients to be able to turn that off so I'll just leave that as it is so we'll choose finish and that's it. So uh, at this point, we can click OK and apply these changes. If you would like, you can go back and actually review all of the settings that will be made. But uh, at the end of the day, we'll just choose OK and finish. And what's going to happen is the direct access getting started wizard is actually going to start applying all of our configuration settings uh, to the server and to the clients via group policy by deploying all of these uh, resources. If you select more details, you can actually get a detailed description of how the getting started wizard is proceeding. Ideally, what we want to see here is all green check boxes because that means that everything worked out OK. So we'll let this finish and you'll see that the configuration was applied successfully we have the nice green check mark which means everything that the getting started wizard attempted to do was completed successfully so we'll choose close and finish